Hiya Youtubers, I am Javier Iñi and I'll be showing you today how to brew this beautiful beer at home. This beer is really special to me because this was the very first beer I ever brewed and as you will see the results were amazing. My expectations were low, I wanted not to die from poisoning, I didn't want to waste the beer and if I could even be more demanding I would like it to be at least decent. Well, all of those three expectations were accomplished and even overpassed, in my humble opinion, but also in the opinion of three very special friends I gave this beer to try, and they said it was actually really good. So I'll give you a description of what this is, and then we're gonna try it. This is a dark ale. The recipe, I made it on my own, but it's a very simple recipe. It's not all grain, it's a partial extract. This means that I used liquid malt extract, and I also added some specialty grains that I steeped. I also added some hops, two hops to be concrete. For bittering, I used progress hops, and for flavor and aroma, I added Columbus. According to the research I've made, these are types of hops that you don't normally use in dark ales. You normally use them in uh, pale ales or IPAs. But I thought it would be interesting to give it a try, and they came out actually really, really good. It's a characteristic flavor that you don't find usually in dark ales. So let's go and try it. I am going to try the spear in a very special pint glass. This is from the 24th Real Ale Festival in Aloha. So when I went there and I tried all of those wonderful craft beers they, they were offering, I felt motivated to give it a try and homebrew beer. So here it is. Let's open it. Oh yeah. All right. And let's pour it. All right, there you have it. Let's try it. Well, first off, you can see that without much effort, I got a nice head. It's actually like half a finger head. The color is, I would say, beige. This is something I learned from home brewers. If you can hear something after you pour the beer, it means that the foam is not very concise. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's wrong or good, but it's not concise. Instead, if you can't hear anything, like this is a case, this means that the foam is really well structured, and the term used to refer to that type of foam is velvety. So yes, this is a velvety foam. The retention of the head doesn't last too much, but still there, a little bit of it. The aroma is incredible. If you like multi beers, this is the first smell that you're going to notice. I can smell a lot of the crystal malt. Crystal malt adds color to the beer and also adds flavor. It adds some hints of toffee and caramel. Now, let's try it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Something you notice when tasting it that you don't notice from the smell is the molasses. You don't notice a flavor to molasses directly. You notice something that reminds you of molasses. We added some molasses to it. So it's, it's nice that you can actually taste it. You can definitely notice the bitter of, of progress hops, but there is no aroma or uh, taste to progress. So I assume that they only added bitterness. On the other hand, I'm not really experienced with Columbus. Every time I tried a beer with Columbus, it didn't have only Columbus. It had Columbus and another hop. So I can taste that there is definitely Columbus in this beer. It's more interesting that the beers I've tried earlier, because here I can taste only Columbus. The body is really, really, really rich. It's thick. It's a thick beer. You can see, I'm not really sure if you can see it here. You see it. It's not a watery beer. This is a very robust beer, strong ale. Content in alcohol is another thing to take into account. Due to the use of molasses and the amount of liquid malt extract, this beer is a little high in alcohol. It's 
percent alcohol by volume, but you can't taste the alcohol in the beer. That that's something that I consider particularly good. Normally, when you try strong ales, you tend to taste on one side the, the beer, and you can also taste the alcohol. Itself probably this is something that people like. I don't like it. I, I like a uniform flavor, and this is well, actually what I've gotten. Beautiful. And I repeat, this is my first batch ever. It came out incredibly good to the point that I thought that this was only luck on the first time, but actually it wasn't. Now that I have brewed three batches, the results have been always amazing. So it's actually really easy to brew beer at home. Finally, before going to the kitchen and start brewing this beer, I'd like you to see there in the back, that's the summer red IPA we brewed last week. I can still see every now and then some bubbles popping up in the airlock, so that means that the fermentation is not finished yet. I would expect it to last until tomorrow, because that, that's what it took last time. It took 10 days. But in any case, I'll take a gravity reading tomorrow and see if it's done. I will shoot a video on that as well. So, without further ado, let's get brewing! So here we are in the kitchen. Let's go to the ingredients. I'll give you a quick overview. First off, water. Remember, what we're particularly interested in is the bottle, because we will use this as a fermenter. We will use barley malt extract. The good thing about this is that you can get it in your local supermarket. The second good thing is that the amount in this jar is perfect for a one-gallon batch. We'll be using half of this can of black treacle, 200 grams of crystal malt. Now the hops. 7 grams of Progress and 5 grams of Columbus. It's not mandatory, but we will use a quarter of a tablet of Protofloc to make the beer clearer. And last but not least, the yeast. This time I didn't forget. So what I did with this uh, sachet of yeast is that last week I caught it. Before I caught it, I sprayed some sanitizer over it. I caught it, I used half of it, and then just taped it. So now this is perfect to be used. And we are going to get that to 65 degrees. In the meantime, we're going to measure 200 grams of crystal malt. So here we are, 200 grams of crystal malt. Now the water is at 65 degrees. So we put our grains into a grain bag. And in they go. We will leave these grains for 30 minutes. Okay. So 30 minutes have passed. You can see the color of the water is now really an intense dark color. And the aroma as well, the aroma is toffee. So now what we do is we take these off and we put them in a pasta strainer. To save time, I'm gonna turn the heat on because we need this to get to a running boil. So to spark our grains, I loaded my kettle with half a liter of water. I'm gonna pour it very gently so we can take all of the goodness of these grains out. I've read a number of times that you shouldn't squeeze your bag, but there is no further explanation after that. So any of the experts, if you know why you shouldn't squeeze your bag, I'm just curious to know why. So now the water that has been infused with the specialty grains is about to boil. Once it starts boiling, we will add our hops and the rest of the fermentables. This is going to be a 30 minute boil, so as soon as it starts boiling we add our progress hops for bittering. 10 minutes after that we will add our fermentables. This is the black treacle and the liquid malt extract. At the half of the boil, 15 minutes, we will add our aroma and flavor hops, that is Columbus, 5 grams. And then at the last 10 minutes of the boil we will add a quarter of a tablet of Protflock. Stay tuned. Okay, so now that we have a running boil, we add our bittering hops. This is 7 grams of progress hops. In they go. Instantly, you can notice the smell. It's 
smells wonderful. So now while we wait those 10 minutes for adding our fermentables, what I've done is I have put the jar of liquid malt extract in a pan with hot water because it's very thick and otherwise it would be really hard to get it out of the jar. All right, so see you in a few. Okay, so 10 minutes have passed and it's time to add our fermentables. I'm gonna start with a hard one first. Oops. Well, it's actually not that hard. I guess if I just stir it like this, it will be much easier. And it's beginning to smell really, really, really nice. The toffee smell created by the crystal malt along with the sweetness of this, it's amazing. Okay, pretty clean. So let's go with the other one. Okay, so here's the jar with liquid malt, liquid malt extract. And in it goes. I'm gonna keep stirring it, because I would like to avoid any scorch at the bottom of the pot. Alright. So now I'm gonna use the same cup, metal cup, we used for the black treacle to gently dissolve the remaining liquid malt extract and try to get it up. So I think it's enough now, it's it's really clean. Most of it got out. Alright. Okay, so now we are in the last 15 minutes of the boil. Time to add our aroma and flavor hops, and in they go. Now the smell is more complex. Obviously, the addition of this Columbus is creating a, an amazing aroma as well. Okay, so last 10 minutes of the boil, and now it's time to add a quarter of a tablet of Prado Flock. This is not mandatory. You don't actually need to add this. The only thing that it does to the beer is to fine it. It makes it clearer. It's only a matter of presentation of, of your beer. Okay, so now our 30 minute boil is over. It's time to cool down this wort. So what I did is I just filled my sink with water. It's really cold. And I'm gonna stir it in a matter of five minutes. This is going to go from 100 degrees to 20. This is what we need, 20 degrees, because that's the temperature on which the yeast can be pitched. Otherwise it would die. So I'm just gonna keep doing this for five minutes and I'll be back once it's done. Cheers. So after I would say a little bit more than five minutes, but not more than seven minutes. This is now at 24 degrees. I just took a reading. And this is enough because we'll pour it into this pot to get rid of the hops. Let's go. We want to get it all out. And you can see already how thick that is. It's not, it's not watery. Okay, so this is done. Now we need to, whoops, we need to take a gravity rating so that we can know the approximate alcohol content that it will have. The, the original gravity on its own is not useful. You also need the final gravity. And then there is a formula which I will leave in the description below for you to actually calculate an estimate. It's not, it's not that precise, but it's an estimate of the alcohol by volume that you'll, your beer will have. Okay, so I've got my hydrometer here. Let's take that reading.
Now the foam isn't actually helping, but let's see. Okay, so it's 1061. Which means that again, this is going to be a good, good, good beer. It's going to be above 5% ABV. Okay, so now it's bottled. And a good tip I can give you is always use a funnel. Because if you don't, well, this can happen. It's okay in any case, it looks like it's a lot, but it's actually not that much. So here we are after cleaning the mess. Um, I drilled a hole on top of the, the lid of this bottle. The purpose is to for me to be able to put the airlock on it. But before, I am going to spray my hand with a little sanitizer. And I am going to shake this wort before pitching the yeast. The reason why, as I explained in my previous and first video, is that during the boil, the wort loses a lot of oxygen and the yeast needs a lot of oxygen, well, I would say regular levels of oxygen, to be able to work properly, to live. So by shaking it like this, one to two minutes maximum, it's enough. Okay, so now we pitch our yeast. This pocket in particular says that there is no need to stir or rehydrate. So now I'll sanitize the airlock as well. This is enough. So we just put it here, and we just pour water in it, and there it is. All right, so here we are. Now the process is finished, and I've placed the beer we just brewed next to her sister. Is it there? It will be fermenting for 10, probably 12 days. I will obviously shoot a video when I take the final gravity reading, and when I'm bottling it for you to see. Again, it's a pleasure for me to have made this video. I really hope you find it useful. And if you like multi beers uh, or dark ales, definitely this is a recipe you gotta try. Please let me know in the comment section below if you know any dark ales with two or more hops on it, because I'm really willing to try those. This is what I consider to be a really good base for a porter. I can perfectly imagine adding some chocolate or vanilla extract to make it even more complex and rich. So that's a challenge I propose and accept, and I'll be doing that for you in some weeks to come. For next week, we have a very interesting beer to brew. It's a smash. That stands for single malt and single hop. I'll keep the malt and the hop secret. So if you like what you see, please subscribe. If you if there is a beer in particular that you want me to brew, leave a comment in the comment section. I'll be pleased to accept any challenge. So for the time being, guys, thanks for watching. Cheers and beers.